Thank you. And like you said, I'm extremely nervous with this many people to talk to and all this technology to, to deal with, but uh, we'll make the best of it. Uh, but uh, when I talk about things I love, uh, it kind of relaxes me and put, puts me in a comfortable spot. So I want to tell you about some waterfalls at the upstate. But I want to start, uh, first off, in a kind of a out of the other world experience. I want to talk about four spheres that everything on this planet can be put into. And then I'm going to fall like a meteor into the waterfalls. So those spheres are uh, the biosphere. Uh, that's all living uh, life on the planet. Then you got the uh, atmosphere, all the gases that we have. You have the lithosphere. And that's all the rocks, minerals, and soils. And you have the hydrosphere. So we'll concentrate on those, those last two as we talk about this. So I can't advance my slides. Just tell all the listeners on Zoom to please turn their camera off. Uh, I, I think I, if I could find a cursor, I can kind of change my view. Uh, I think it's on my thing, but. Just say it, though. It's real. It's really on my uh, change my view to uh, just the speaker only. Is what I really need to do. But I I don't have any way to do it. Escape key. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Reshare. Stop sharing. All right. I'm gonna stop this. So I. Well, see, I can't get a cursor up there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm working. Uh, all right, so I'll start with the, the uh, watersheds that we have in, in North America. The largest one is going to be the St. Lawrence Seaway in North America. The largest one we have on the East Coast is going to be the Chesapeake. And then zooming down into South Carolina, the largest one we'll have is the, is the Santee watershed. Do you all know what watershed y'all live in? By the way, so we have these four major watersheds in the state: the Savannah, the uh, Ace is the only one within this, totally within the state, the Santee, and the uh, PD. The Santee being the largest in our state. I live in the Santee watershed, and then uh, to have a waterfall, besides water, you have to have topography. So we have these five uh, major zones of across the state, the Blue Ridge, the Piedmont, the Sand Hills, the Coastal Plain, and the Coastal Zone. Uh, in this map, they divide the Coastal Plain into inner and outer, but we'll concentrate uh, more on the Blue Ridge uh, waterfalls. There, there are some waterfalls right across the fall line where it changes from the Piedmont to the sandy soil. So the Blue Ridge escarpment uh, is a the Cherokee call it the blue wall. This is uh, from Bald Rock Overlook, looking down on the foothills, uh, Cherokee Foothills Parkway. This averaged about 2,000 foot drop uh, from over 3,000 to about 1,100 or, or 1,100. This is the view from Caesar's Head looking at the table rock of the, of the escarpment. So uh, what I'm gonna do is look at the three counties in the upstate, uh, Oconee, Pickens, and Greenville, and look at some of those waterfalls. We'll start with uh, Oconee County. So the biggest concentration of waterfalls that you can find in, uh, in the upstate, I believe, is the, on Brasstown Creek. You got the Little Brasstown Creek, which flows into the Brasstown Creek, and you have um, four waterfalls that drop over 120 feet all together. This is the Little Brasstown Falls. In, re in the last couple of years, they've built some access bridges. You don't have to wade the creek and get, get wet feet or wet body to, to see this waterfall. And uh, you don't have to rock scramble down to see the, some of the lower falls. But this is uh, the upper one on uh, Little Brass Town uh, Creek. And then the largest of the series is the Brass Town Cascade at, at 55 feet. It's, uh, they have different kinds of waterfalls, and I'll talk about them as we see them. And you also have different ratings of waterfalls from fair to good, nice to fair to good, uh, 
excellent and superior. Well, we'll talk about the superior, excellent, and maybe a few goods as well as we go through. So Brasstown Cascade is uh, uh, right above Brasstown Vale. And if I didn't have that um, black bar up there, you could see a little bit of the cascade. So this is a plunge type waterfall where it just free falls uh, from the rock ledge down into the river below. Uh, if this is in Oconee County, and it is uh, near Long Creek Fire Station, so a, a few miles south of the fire station on Brasstown Road. Um, I'll tell you a couple of resources I have for these waterfalls. Uh, one is uh, Waterfalls of the Upstate by uh, Thomas Keene. Uh, my favorite website is uh, for waterfalls is ncwaterfalls.com. And they have a whole section on South Carolina waterfalls on ncwaterfalls.com. They not only give you the driving directions to these waterfalls, but they'll give you the hiking directions as well. They give you mileages, left turn, right turn, that kind of stuff. And I have a spreadsheet here that I, I kind of go by. It's kind of dark and I can't see it too well, so I'm probably not going by it. But it has, uh, I'd be glad to forward to anybody uh, this spreadsheet that has the, the county. Let me, let me see what I got on here. The height of the waterfall, the stream that it's on, the, the watershed that it's on, it's the type of waterfall, whether it's in this case a, a, a free fall plunge. Uh, it has a, the height description, which would be difficult, medium, moderate, mm -hmm. or uh, strenuous. And it has the rating of the waterfall, like I said earlier, excellent, superior, good, or nice, or something like that. That's a lot of information. And also I include if it has a, a swimming hole, if you want to go swimming. So right below the the uh the veil is the sluice, brass down sluice. A sluice are shoot, they're kind of synonymous terms for a crack in the rock, which the uh, stream flows through. In this case, as a waterfall. That's a good swimming hole. It's got a little sandy beach down there. And like I said, they've improved the access to these uh, waterfalls, so it uh, makes it a little easier to get to. Whoa. Now, first time I did a waterfall presentation, a guy came up to me afterward and said, you didn't have one of our best waterfalls in the state in there. And it turned out to be Battle Creek Falls. So he shared with me some information how to find that. And I've, I've been there six times, and three times I found the waterfall. <laughs> It's a it's a it's a tough little hike in there. My wife's been there and she says once is good enough for me. I don't need to go back. But this is like a 150 foot waterfall. You can't see all of it in one picture. You have to walk up the waterfall to see some more of it. And you walk upstream and you can see some more waterfalls up there. But if you want to see this one, I would recommend doing it pretty soon because I, last time I was there, there's lots of flagging tape on the trees and. Looks like there's going to be a development back in there. It, it's near Brasstown Heritage Preserve, which is downstream from the waterfall, but I believe this waterfall is actually on some private property. Although there's no there's not any no trespassing signs yet that I've seen. All right, this is uh going back to, close to the Chatuga River, King Creek Falls, a little spur trail off the Foothills Trail, about three quarters of a mile to get up there to it. Uh, this log that you see in this waterfall has been there for a long time, ever since I've been going to it. It's a nice 70 foot uh, spectacular waterfall. It's, it's tiered, which means it has the different ledges to it as it drops over. Uh, Spoon Auger Falls is upstream on the Chattooga from Burroughs Ford. It's a real short walk. Uh, I like when I go to waterfall hikes, I like to do them in clusters. I like to go where there's several that I can visit in, in one day. Uh, this is a different view of the Spoon Auger Falls, a little creek empty into the uh, Chattooga River. Uh, Pigpen Falls is right on the Foothills Trail. It's about a 25 foot waterfall with a nice swimming hole there. And Lick Log Creek is downstream uh, with three waterfalls. You see the upper drop, the middle drop, and, it, and this is again on the Foothills Trail. If you walk down a little, uh, Bushwhack ground to the river there, you can stand on a sandbar and take and see the view from the lower falls there. 
Uh, Beco Falls is uh, off of, uh, uh, I think it's South Carolina 107. I'll be leading the hike to Beco Falls during the Foothills Conference annual meeting uh, in early November. It's about a 1.9 mile one-way hike with a little bit of off-trail scramble to see the waterfalls. And actually, there's four back-to-back uh, -back on this. The, this is the easiest one to get to, the Upper Beco Falls. Possum Creek Falls is, a, is another one in the uh, uh, Sumter National Forest that uh, has a nice two-mile one-way trail to it. It's a stream that flows into the, this waterfall is about a quarter mile from the Chattooga River. And uh, Secret Falls off a of winding stairs uh, trail in uh, up above, just north of Oconee State Park. You walk down that uh, winding stairs trail and you have to know where to get off the trail to do the bushwhack to the Secret Falls. And uh, if you go upstream from Secret Falls, You'll see uh, Deep Secret Falls, another little waterfall. Keep going upstream, you see uh, Deeper Secret Falls. These have other names, but I take the liberty to them. And then Deep Dark Secret Falls is above that. But as you keep going up these, this uh, stream, it gets steeper and, and uh, the hike out is, uh, I, I enjoyed the hike out because you climb this uh, you always have to hold on to stuff, keep the falling off the cliff there, but you end up on a ridge and hike back and have some nice views on that ridge. No trails involved, except for that wider stairs go. And this is kind of confusing. Uh, there's several waterfalls that have, um, you know, like Rainbow Falls, there's several Rainbow Falls, uh, Falls Creek Falls, there's several of those. Um, one way I remember to keep this one straight is Fall Creek Falls is Fall is singular, but that's the one that has many waterfalls, which I'll show you. That's the upper one, right? Right by the. This is all Oconee County. We're, we haven't moved out of Oconee County yet. Uh, so the, this was right below the road, the upper Fall Creek Falls. And then the middle one is just, uh, you could hear it. And, uh, Whenever I hike, take people to a waterfall, I, I'll say there's three steps in a waterfall hike. Uh, when you first hear the waterfall, you hear that distant roar is step one. And then when you see that gleam of white silver through the trees, that's step two. And then when you're right there at the waterfall, that's step three. So this is the middle of drop. Uh, I remember going there with a ice on the waterfall. It's really pretty too. And then the about a mile downstream is the lower um, waterfall of Fall Creek Falls. This is one that's on the cover of the Palmetto Conservation Foundation waterfall books of South uh, Waterfalls of South Carolina. And if you keep on going down to the Chattooga River, you'll see some more smaller waterfalls, but these three big ones are the main one, the upper, middle, and lower. And Sid Falls is also over in the Sumter National Forest. It's a uh, walk through a uh, uh, an old service road, poor service road, through some meadows, and then drop down a, a steep hill to see this waterfall. This is a fan-shaped tiered waterfall. It's near at the top, wide at the bottom, about 55 foot. Very good rating on this waterfall, spectacular. Reedy Branch is an easy to get to waterfall. It's like 0.3 mile hike off of uh, US 76, right before you get over into uh, the, right before you get to the Chattooga River. It's, it's right between the Chattooga Ridge Road and the Chattooga River. Maybe a, a less than a half a mile downhill from the Chattooga Ridge Road. This is about a 35 foot waterfall uh, in the winter. You know, it's, it's really pretty with all, all the ice on there. This is a cascade type waterfall, Riley Moore. Falls. It, it's a river wide waterfall. It's only 15 feet, but it's a you know it's a river wide. It's lots of water. It's very impressive. Good swimming hole right below it. Good fishing on the Chaga River too. This is a little tributary of the of of the, um, the Cedar Creek. It's a about a 10 10 to 12 foot high waterfall. 
Um, but I always walk across above this waterfall to get to the other side and scramble down the rocks to see uh, Blue Hole Falls, which is 70 foot, uh, a chute type waterfall. And a great swimming hole right there below it, as you can tell in this shot, but October was a little bit chilly for swimming, so I haven't, haven't swam it yet. And Yellow Branch is another uh, spectacular rated waterfall. The, uh, I love the apron on top of it where the, the water comes out um, as a little curtain. And by the way, this is salamander heaven here on this spray zone. There's all kinds of salamanders. Uh, you usually see at least a half a dozen or more uh, salamanders as I start looking around on these wet rocks. This is another Sumter National Forest Trail. Hilliard Falls is also in Oconee County. It's a, a, it's a little spur trail off the Foothills Trail. It's on Bear Camp Creek. Uh, there's lots of creeks up there they, with the word bear in them. Bear Walla, Bear Camp, Bear Creek itself. So, this is a beautiful waterfall in the, in the fall. Is it, this is a, uh, as it sheets out over the rock. Trying to get pretty in the fall there. Maple's starting to show out. Here you're, that's the that's my favorite waterfall on the Foothills Trail, I believe. There's a bunch of water. One day I want to put together all my all the Foothills Trail waterfalls. Another Sumter National Forest hike could be uh, Lee Falls. This is uh, an example of a segmented waterfall. That means you have different kind of uh, segments of uh, vertical. Uh, separation of the water. This is a, a 75 foot in one reference and 90 foot waterfall in another reference. So somewhere in between 75 and 90, it's, but it's rated spectacular. You have to cross the uh, Tomasi Creek uh, three times before you get to this waterfall. So, so depending on water level, it can be a challenging hike. Beautiful hike though. Uh, this is uh, probably our most photographed waterfall in the state, Station Cove, and a short three-quarter mile hike in from uh, Oconee Station historic area. And uh, the point I'm making here, uh, this, my wife and I, and if, if you, you know, have an experience of going to a waterfall, it's it's a wonderful experience. But if you share it with somebody, that really exponentially uh, increases your experience. So share that experience with somebody you like. This is another uh, is Queen of Falls. Uh, uh, it's easy. It's a moderate, it's an easy hike. It's three quarter mile one way. Uh, this is one of the hikes that I've done with the senior explorers, which, you know, like to walk around shopping malls a lot and they're not much in the woods. Uh, this is this is easy enough for them. And, and another easy doozy. Easy peasy waterfall hike is the Issaquina Falls. It's uh, like uh, 100 yards at the most to get to the viewing platform. So this is a nice 100 foot waterfall. But if you uh, go down below the viewing platform, you see uh, quite a bit more of the waterfall. This is again from the viewing platform. And then this shot that I started off with, this is uh, the second drop, you can see the, the first drop up in the uh, top of the screen, but then the second drop is right in the middle of the screen, and then there's a drop below where I stand in as well. So there's a lot of waterfall there all together. So uh, this is the lower white waterfalls. And, and I, I've got two pictures of this because I want to show you that this is a winter shot and uh, and this is the fall shot. So when you go see waterfalls, you know, might, you might want to come back a different time of year to see, you know, it's like a woman that wears a different dress, different hairdo. They, all, they look different whenever you go, go back to see them. Uh, but this is the steepest gradient river in east of the Rockies, east, east of the Mississippi River, we'll say. Uh, it drops 700 feet and a half mile beginning with the top of this waterfall. As it goes down to Lake Jocassee, uh, it drops 700 feet in one half mile. So it's waterfall after waterfall after waterfall. And coming up from Lake Jocassee, I've seen three of the drops. I've never been, I've never connected those dots because it's just uh, really technical climbing stuff. 
Speaking of Joe Cassie, let me show you a few of the waterfalls around Joe Cassie. We're still in, we'll still look at the Oconee side and move to the Pickens side after this. By the way, this is my office. This is where I work on Wednesdays. <laughs> so we got Rye Creek Falls. Uh, this is a triple drop. People start doing all and taking pictures before they even get around to see the other two drops. A lot of times they look at that lower drop. This is what it looks like uh, about full pool. So you have an upper drop in the shadows and then the middle drop in the sunshine and that lower drop that splits into two segments. Good jumping rock right, right up there if it's full pool level. It's a good place to paddle behind the, the waterfall it's, or, or walk behind the waterfall. You can swim under the waterfall, get your shoulders relaxed. I could use that right now. And this is what it looks like in the wintertime in a lower water le level. You know, it's a, there's a lot of rocks down there. You got nowhere to jump if you're going to jump, jump in that big hole. Uh, Mill Creek Falls. <clears throat> Another one. Uh, if you go up Mill Creek Falls, um, follow the Mill Creek all the way up to the ridge, and you come down the other side of the ridge, you come right into Rice Creek Falls. So they, they're almost uh, they're separated by that muster ground road that up there on the on the ridge itself. You have to access those in the water. Yeah, unless you want to walk. Uh, through some rough terrain from Muster Ground Road, which is open on the September 14th to January 14th, basically hunting season. So do a tour with Jocasey Lake Tours and I'll show it to you. Plus these other ones in Pickens County that are on the lake. Laurel Fork Falls is probably the biggest waterfall that we see from the lake. Uh, it has a, a, a three-part drop to it. You see the upper and the middle drop right there in early spring. My favorite time of year to see this one is when the service berries are, are blooming on the side of the, of the waterfall. And then this is the lower drop. You have to get into a little uh, grotto, we call it, uh, if the water is high enough to get in there to see that lower drop. Just some cool light uh, going on there in that plunge, plunge pool at the bottom of the lower drop of Laurel Fork Falls on Lake Joe Cassidy. Uh, right next to Laurel Fork is a little creek called Jackie's Branch. Uh, you you and and Eli get in back. You get in back. Nobody. You get in the back of the train. All right. Go, go. <laughs> you can see why that's their favorite spot. <laughs> so, so this is Virginia Hawkins waterfall, also on the uh, Foothills Trail in Pickett's County. And it's definitely a segment at fall. You can see. Uh, four or five segments of, of the first drop, and then it becomes a tiered waterfall after that. Virginia Hawkins. The Reedy Cove Creek is, a, it's got a, some fairly good fishing in it and, and some waterfalls as well. The most well known is the Twin Falls, which can be accessed from a little trail going through the top of it. But the easiest access is a, a quarter mile hike on private property to a viewing platform, which is uh, this this view right here. Lots of water that day. This is another chute type waterfall or sluice. 
of the East Centoy Narrows, which is a earth trail off the Foothills Trail, to a uh, heritage preserve uh, operated by DNR, South Carolina DNR. Pinnacle Falls, this is in Pickens County, uh, near, uh, let's see, is it, uh, I think it is part of the Table Rock State Park. It, you access it by uh, the Palmetto Trail, and then you take off the Palmetto Trail, uh, go, go up a little short hike to this 150-foot uh, waterfall. The last uh, 200 yards or so is it gets pretty steep as you get up there, and it was kind of a challenge with on that day with the with the snow and ice on the trail. There is a, a small creek crossing, depending on the water level, how difficult that might be. Uh, but if you uh, if it is good flow in the creek, makes it hard to cross. You'll be rewarded by the amount of water on the waterfall. You know, it's always interesting to me. You can cross a little, jump across a little creek. And go downstream, have this nice big waterfall. I said, How can all that little water make such a big waterfall? But it does. This is uh, the lower creek, the lower waterfall of Mill Creek. There's a middle uh, uh, Mill Creek Falls uh, that has a spur trail to it in the state park, Table Rock State Park. But this is on private property. It's about a 50 foot waterfall, but it, it looked pretty good in the fall. Went there with my uh, friend Bill Robertson on this trip, particular trip. Uh, Carrot Creek uh, Falls in, in uh, Table Rock State Park, and upstream from that, you have Carrot Creek and uh, Green Creek go together. This is the waterfall up the Green Creek side. This is the Table Mountain Trail that you pass by. Uh, Green Creek Falls, about 60 foot uh, waterfall there. All right, let's look at some Greenville County waterfalls. Ashmore Falls is the, this one. It's a water slide for part of it. It also has a horsetail. A horsetail waterfall is, this, is when the water hits a rock and kicks out like a horse's uh, mane or something like that, or <laughs> horse's tail maybe. So it's got lots of components to it. It's a huge waterfall, uh, water slide there at the bottom. Looking across the, the with uh, the lake there. You can see the waterfall coming down the, the cliff face. And then looking up from the top of the waterfall, you can see the dam across the, well, the dam's under my black bar there. And you can see across the lake there from that view. This is Moonshine Falls. It has a, like a 90 degree turn to it. It has a plunge on the first part of it, and then it hits a rock and kicks around 90 degrees. Uh, the view from underneath the waterfall, behind the waterfall, where the still moonshine still remnant star is, is pretty nice. There's also a rare fern in there uh, that uh, grows right on that rock that I like. I like to show people it's a little fern. The the cells are one one cell. The 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 leaves of the fern are one cell thickness, and you can look. Pretty cool to look at those uh, fern fronds. This is downstream from Moonshine in uh, this part of the Caesar's Head uh, State Park. This is called Confusion Falls. It's called called that because of two waterfalls come together and join and uh, to the same plunge pool. This is an off trail hike. They don't sink. Uh, yeah. It, same uh, the creek on the left is where Moonshine Falls comes down downstream from that, and the, and the creek on the right is so, uh, another unnamed creek that joined together. So this is Ravencliff Falls. There's one, one discrepancy on this uh, Thomas King's waterfall book. He calls uh, Upper Whitewater Falls the highest in the east. Uh, he, he says that's 408 feet. But in his same book, he says got Raven Cliff Falls, and he says this is 420 feet. I asked him about that one time. He said, well, if I ever make it a, a new edition, I'll get that straightened out. <laughs> and this is my friend Bobby Holiday, the one of the big photographer friends of mine, getting set up. This was at a, a Foothills Trail Conference hike that I led. The 
peak of the fall season in that part of the world is the first weekend in November. It doesn't have to be a, a, a beautiful, spectacular waterfall to, to find beauty in, in, in water, in nature. This is, I believe, on Matthews Creek. And Jones Gap State Park, this is a little spur trail to a 50-foot waterfall. I was surprised it was rated spectacular. Usually the spectacular ones are, you know, closer to 100 foot, 70 to 100 foot. Like this one is 120 foot rainbow falls in Jones Gap State Park. It's a half mile strenuous hike down from the top, Camp Greenville, or a 1.6 mile strenuous hike from the bottom, Jones Gap State Park. So uh, in the early afternoon is when you notice the rainbow if you have a sunny day. Beautiful rocks uh, behind the waterfall there. And so this is the Falls Creek Falls with the S. There's only one waterfall there. So, that's, so when you say Fall Creek Falls, you, go, you might want to say Oconee County or, or Greenville County. Or if you say Rainbow Falls, you want to say what state or county you're in. And uh, this is Head Foremost Falls. This is also in that Mountain Bridge Wilderness area. It's on private property. Uh, I would not go there during hunting season. They like they like to hunt around there. But we, we got to go there with the Natural Land Trust people. And this is Last Falls on Slickham. Slickham Creek is uh, one of the creeks that empties into, uh, I believe it's, the, yeah, the middle Saluda. Right there before you, uh, Highway 11 high, and 276 veers off on up Caesar's Head. There's a couple of creeks in there. There's one that they sell peanuts at. That's Wildcat Wayside. And you keep going west a little bit. There you got Slickham Creek. And there's there's some good waterfalls on that one. This is Last Falls on Slickham. Uh, this is a winter view versus a fall view. And then upstream from Last Falls is a sweet bang. This, I think spell, spell check got me. It's supposed to be T-H-A-N-G, sweet thing. And this is it when it's uh, really flowing. Probably not so sweet there. And this is a, a winter shot of sweet thing. And upstream from the Wildcat Wayside is the upper Wildcat Falls. Nice 100 foot waterfall. People have uh, died climbing climb this waterfall, so don't climb waterfalls. The wet rocks are slippery, especially if you've got a hiker shoes on. And then the uh, one you see from Highway 11 that pull off there, a Wildcat Wayside. Part of the state park. And Wildcat Wayside after a big rain. Nobody swimming there this, this day. Uh, Chestnut Ridge Heritage Preserve has a lot of pretty cool waterfalls. This is uh, one you can see from a, a trail that you cross over the river. You hike two and a half miles into the Heritage Preserve across the uh, Pac South Packlet River in this case. And uh, pretty soon you'll see this waterfall and there's several more in there that, that I could show you. I don't have pictures of those on this presentation though. Everybody knows the Reedy River Falls in, in Grable, right, right there by the bridge. Can't leave that one out. And I want to show you a couple of uh, waterfalls in nearby North Carolina. One of my favorites is the uh, Courthouse Falls up a four service road off of Highway uh, 215 as you're going uh, north of Rosman. Uh, I can only stand that water for about 30 seconds. After that, I can't breathe anymore. It's so cold. Now, this is Pearson's Falls. We did a plant survey up there one year and got to see this waterfall once a month, which is 90-foot waterfall on Colt Creek. Lots of beautiful plants up there. $5 admission from up the uh, garden club there. It's well worth a little uh, quarter-mile hike to see this waterfall and lots of plants to see going and coming.
And this is the upper Whitewater Falls. Uh, I believe this photo was taken in 2010 uh, at, a, at the viewing platform. It's interesting, this viewing platform right behind me is a uh, Carolina hemlock. And just to the left, I think you can see it in the lower, in the, below the handrail is, is a Canada hemlock. Side by side, the two different species of hemlock trees we have in South Carolina. I thought that's pretty cool. This is the upper White Waterfalls. And this is upper White Waterfalls uh, about 37 or 30, about 39 years ago. <laughs> maybe, maybe 40 years ago. It's been a while. So we've been married 40 years. So this is probably right before we got married. Uh, in DuPont uh, State Forest, there's the uh, several waterfalls you want to see. High Falls, uh, probably the biggest of all. Uh, this is Rainbow Falls. Um, So that's just the upper drop of, of the Brighter Bell Falls. But your butt also known as Cliff Fall, but uh, it, it's people used to slide down that a lot, and now it's all, uh, somebody purchased that property, so it's no trespassing. Nobody gets to go on it anymore. Oh, but uh, you can walk up to where you can see it. And that's about it. Uh, <laughs> down below, uh, Bust Your Butt Falls is Rainbow Falls, a spectacular eighty-foot waterfall. I've got a Bill Robertson photo of that in my living room and right in between them is uh turtleback falls so uh so now you have to hike uh, a few miles in to, to see this at gorgeous it's part of gorgeous state park but there on the uh, left you can see a little uh place where there's a little hole that you can kind of stand in it's about chest high you can stand in this hole let the river flow by you and then next thing you want to do is you want to get out on that rock and slide down 15 feet of rock and drop 10 feet uh, into the river. Like I really get in the waterfalls. <laughs> so I wanna thank y'all for uh, letting me talk about stuff. Oh, when you're taking these pictures of waterfalls, what kind of shutter speed are you using? I'm using a, uh, I'm using a uh, point and shoot camera on automatic mode. Yeah, it's a little uh, Sony. Hi, Dan. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm here representing the Zoom viewers. First of all, if you get a question from the audience, will you please repeat it? Okay. And secondly, um, you mentioned a spreadsheet of waterfalls and there is great desire to have a copy of that. So if you can email it to us, we could share it with the people who are interested. Okay. After the program. And then, um, so yeah, that would be great. Just tell me where to email it. I'll put yeah, it we'll, we'll check in with you after. Okay. What was the name of the book that you mentioned at the beginning? Uh, the name of the book that I use as a reference is uh, South Carolina, Waterfalls of South Carolina by Thomas King. Is a is my my favorite waterfall hike book. It has a lot of information on how to drive to it and how to get to it. But I also use a, a website, ncwaterfalls.com. Waterfalls. Oh, yeah. Well, happy to hear it. You can send an email to me, then I'll send it to you. I don't know how it works. Uh, you said it was Waterfalls of South Carolina by Thomas King. Thomas King. 
I enjoyed that. Bring back a lot of memories. My name is Jim Tannenberg. I lived up in Hendersonville for 22 years. And I did trail in the town. It's Mr. National Forest. So there are a lot of those familiar. Sometimes we hike down in South Carolina, but mainly up in North Carolina. Yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Sky Falls? That doesn't ring a bell to me, but you know, we would see them and not know the names of them. I hiked for 22 years and I did trail maintenance for 22 years right there. A lot of fun. Are they the white ones or the pink ones? Okay, I have it. Turtle head season right now, and they're pretty when they're blue. Hey, Bob. The same. Yeah. Nice job. You, you failed to mention, and over you get these waterfalls of Harvard picture. <laughs> no, the 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 new uh, improvement they made in Brass Town make it easier to get to. You know, I've been I've been it's kind of a long drive. Have you been there since they put the you know, um, walkways? Me neither. But I make just to see it. I, I think Greg Taylor's is there. Well, he's uh he sent me something from Hector that uh wants to get together and we'll get back. He's one of the lawyers. Yes. Travel. Yeah. I have I have never seen State Park on one of Definitely. And it's Park. right before you get to the Shirley Recreation I'm area. The winding stairs trail that takes off there. Like a couple of yellow posts on the side of the road. That's where you're parking. 
I think we probably will, and so I've included what we need to be telling for Because if we're not communicating the right information, the reservoir is coming out. Yeah, well, there's a couple of them. It's just a. The, the Greenville Watershed has the Saluda Reservoir and the Table Rock Reservoir. So that's probably the Saluda. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the trouble with common names. They, they get used a lot. Yeah. Spreadsheet. And then that's the flower. So everyone who has some. I saw Yeah, but I mean, so. Yeah, you could stand in there and be back with me. Yeah. Right. And if it's for a growing man, like, oh, yeah. Oh, just, it's going to be like a lake. Yeah. Well, you never did. Did you slide yeah. off? Cool. Not how many years ago. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, that was. Those big old halls of rope to climb up, back up when you got to the bottom. Oh, they have that then? Well, it was when I was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but one guy, he, he tried it when it was uh, way too much water. They never saw him. Yeah. 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 You got to use common sense. Thank you so much, Dan. That was great. Best crowd we've had in the longest time. They loved it. I'll